Have you ever wondered how we separate valuable minerals from useless rock? Imagine mining tons of rock, but only a small portion contains the mineral we actually need. How do we extract it efficiently? Well, that's where froth flotation comes in. This game-changing process is the backbone of the mining industry, allowing us to extract essential metals like copper, gold, and even industrial minerals used in everyday life. But how does it work? How can tiny air bubbles separate valuable minerals from waste? In this video, we'll break it down step by step, covering the science, the key ingredients, and even the latest innovations shaping the future of mineral processing. So, whether you're a student, a mining professional, or just curious about how we extract the Earth's resources, this is for you. Let's dive into the fascinating world of froth flotation. Froth flotation is one of the most versatile methods for separating mineral particles, and it all comes down to air bubbles and surface properties. In a mineral water slurry, air bubbles selectively attach to specific mineral surfaces. These bubble-coated particles rise to the surface, forming a froth layer that is then removed. Meanwhile, particles that remain completely wetted stay in the liquid phase and are discarded as tailings. The secret behind froth flotation lies in surface chemistry, specifically the interaction between air bubbles and mineral surfaces. When a bubble meets a particle, whether it attaches or not depends on the interfacial energies between the solid, liquid, and gas phases. This is where the contact angle theta comes in. It's the angle formed where the vapor, solid, and liquid phases meet. If the contact angle is very small, the bubble won't attach, and the particle remains in the liquid phase. If the contact angle is large, the bubble attaches strongly, helping the particle float. In most flotation processes, a contact angle near 90 degrees is ideal for effective separation. But attachment isn't enough. The bubbles and particles must actually come into contact for flotation to occur. How do particles get recovered in froth flotation? There are three main mechanisms, selective attachment, entrainment, and physical entrapment. In true flotation, collectors make target minerals hydrophobic. These particles attach to air bubbles and rise to the surface, forming a froth layer that is skimmed off. This process is highly selective, recovering only hydrophobic minerals. In entrainment, fine hydrophilic particles get trapped in water between bubbles and are carried into the froth, contaminating the concentrate and reducing purity. This happens more with fine particles and excess water recovery. Lastly, physical entrapment occurs when particles get trapped inside clusters of hydrophobic minerals and bubbles. These aggregates float together, even if some particles aren't hydrophobic. Froth flotation operates as an interconnected system, where changes in one factor impact the entire process. To achieve optimal performance, all parameters must be carefully balanced. Chemistry plays a vital role in froth flotation. Collectors make valuable minerals hydrophobic, frothers stabilize the froth, and activators enhance bubble attachment. Meanwhile, depressants prevent unwanted minerals from floating, and pH control ensures the right chemical environment. Fine-tuning these reagents is key to optimizing flotation efficiency. Flotation performance depends on well-designed equipment. Cell design impacts bubble movement, while agitation and airflow ensure proper mixing. Cell bank dimensions and control systems help maintain stability and efficiency. Proper equipment setup is essential for achieving high recovery rates. Operational conditions directly affect flotation success. Feed rate controls material input, while mineralogy and particle size influence separation efficiency. Pulp density and temperature impact flotation kinetics. Carefully managing these factors ensures a smooth and effective process. Froth flotation is used in various industries for efficient mineral separation. Here are some common applications. It helps in separating sulfide minerals from silica gang. Flotation is used to separate potassium chloride, sylvite, from sodium chloride, halite. In coal processing, it separates coal from ash-forming minerals. It also removes silicate minerals from iron ores for higher-grade products. Flotation aids in separating phosphate minerals from silicates. And in recycling, it's used for de-inking recycled newsprint, making it more sustainable. These diverse applications highlight the versatility and importance of froth flotation in both mining and industrial processes. Froth flotation offers several advantages, but it also comes with some limitations. 
It provides high recovery of valuable minerals. The process allows selective separation, improving purity. It's also effective for processing fine particles that are challenging to separate using other methods. However, it has high energy consumption, making it less efficient in some cases. The use of costly chemicals can add to operational expenses. Additionally, there are environmental impacts due to reagent use. Despite these limitations, froth flotation remains a powerful and widely used separation method in mineral processing. That wraps up our overview of froth flotation. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to Brainwaves for more insights into science. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.